Good morning. Right, today we're looking at the moments of forces. The moment of force about a point is it's is the force times the perpendicular distance. So force times perpendicular distance between that force and the pivot point. Okay, very simple. For example, if we have Amelia here pushing with this force, um, let's just say the force was uh, 10 newtons and the perpendicular distance was 5 meters, we would simply do 10 newtons times 5 meters to get 50 newton meters. So the units of force are newton meters. This is the simplest example we can have. Let's look down here where we've got a slightly more complicated one with young Cedric. Okay. Um, oh, thank you for holding that, Cedric. That'll be quite useful. Let's move that to there. Right, so we have uh, Cedric pushing here, force of 10 newtons, at an angle of 50 degrees to this line, 8 meters, about the pivot point X. Now, I've said that the moment of the force about a point is the perpendicular distance times that force. We can also kind of rewrite that to say it's the distance times the perpendicular force. If we have here this force componentized to be at 90 degrees to that distance, that's exactly the same thing. Let, we're going to check this out in two different ways. Okay, So here, let's do this first. We've got the component here swimming through the angle. This one would be cos, so this one must be 10 sine 50. So our moment about point X of Cedric pushing with this force at this angle is the distance which is 8 times 10 sine 50. And that gives us, if my calculations are correct, 61.28 Newton meters. Okay. Now what we could have done, oh this looks quite handy. It's a good job someone keeps leaving these bits lying around, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look here. We've got, we could have said, look, here's the perpendicular distance to that force. So we've got the force of 10 multiplied by the perpendicular distance D. Now to find D, let's use trig. Right angle triangle, 50, that's opposite, 8 is the hypotenuse, so we know that the sine of 50 is equal to the opposite D over the hypotenuse 8, so D is equal to 8 times sine 50, so 10 times D becomes 10 times 8 times sine 50, and looking, comparing these two little puppies here, they are exactly the same. So it works both ways. You can either componentize the force, so it's at 90 degrees to the distance, or you can find the perpendicular distance to that force. Okay, let's look at some practical examples. I have my friends here to help me. Uh, right, Bob, stand on the end of a seesaw. His moment about the pivot point. Let's assume the pivot point is in the middle. Bob has a weight acting down of 60, his mass, multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. His moment, clockwise, because we now need to make sure that we're always defining moments in either clockwise or anti-clockwise as a direction. So his moment is his distance of 5 multiplied by his weight of 60g. That gives us 2943. Newton meters, so oh, uh, M needs to be, good. Okay, now Cedric, hi Cedric, let's move Cedric into here, careful on the edge Cedric. Okay, uh, mass is 50 kilograms on the other end, the total moment, so taking moments clockwise, Cedric's moment is actually anti-clockwise about this point here. So, taking moments clockwise, we have Bob's of 2943. Cedric's is going in the opposite direction, so that's minus distance times his weight of 50g. That gives us a moment of 490.5 newton meters. As it's positive, it's telling us 
that some of the moments is in the positive direction. If that was negative, obviously, it would be anticlockwise direction. It's positive clockwise, negative anticlockwise. Cedric is now going to move, and he, oh, where is he? There he is. He's going to move so that he is now one meter from the pivot. Amelia is going to leap onto the end. Careful, Amelia. Good. Okay. Now, we don't know Amelia's weight, but the key point here is it says that the seesaw balances. So we know that the sum of moments clockwise is equal to the sum of moments anti-clockwise. So, let's look at clockwise moments first. Clockwise moments, we have Bob, who we've already worked out as five lots of 60G, which is 300G. Anti-clockwise, we have Cedric, who is one meter away, and his mass is 50G. And we have added to that in the anti-clockwise direction, Amelia, whose distance is a 5, and her weight, let's just call it A, G. Okay, now I've kept the G's in, as you can probably see, because to save all the complicated calculations, they all cancel. And we end up from this with A being 50 kilograms. So Amelia's weight is 50 kilograms. Let's look at another example. We have all three here pulling on a rod pivoted about point X. First thing I'm going to do is componentize these forces. So here this would be 3 cos 20. Here this would be 7 cos sine 30. Okay, I've done that because it's very easy then to work out the moments which are the distance times the perpendicular force, or force times perpendicular distance here. Okay, sum of moments about point X. Let's have a look at that. So, taking moments clockwise, we have young Bob. This force definitely will pull clockwise, so he has a distance of 10 meters multiplied by the perpendicular force of 3 cos 20. Now, Amelia will also be creating here a positive moment, so her distance is 3 and the componentized force is 7 sine 30. Whereas young Cedric has an anti-clockwise moment and his distance, so anti-clockwise moment negative, his distance is 10 meters multiplied by his force of 5. Working all of that out very quickly in my head gives us, or oh, I would say that's about minus 11.3 newtons. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us as the sum of moments is anti-clockwise, oh, sorry, Newton meters, is anti-clockwise 11.3 Newton meters. Now, let's assume we don't know the force with which Bob is pulling at. We would like that rod in equilibrium. So, what force does Bob have to pull with to get that? Well, Fine, we do exactly the same method, taking moments. Now, we don't know, we knew before for Bob, all I'm going to do is just use what I've done before because not a lot has changed. We've got Bob's moment of, let's call it X, and then that was times 3 cos 20. We have uh, Amelia's moment, which is the same, of 3 times 7 sine 30. 30. Now, because it is in equilibrium, the sum of those two moments is equal, because they're clockwise, is equal to Cedric's anti-clockwise moment of distance of 10 times 5. Now, obviously, we can solve all that pretty simply. And again, uh, let me see, yeah, at 5, carry the 4, we get x is 4.2 newtons. So, Bob's forces pulling at to keep that rod in equilibrium is 4.2 newtons. Okay, thank you for listening. Goodbye.